Hi, I'm Gareth Green and in this video I'm going to explain how to use extended chords in four-part harmony. So first of all let's just be sure we know what we mean by this term extended when we're talking about chords and then we can talk about how we want to use them. So you've got your basic diatonic chords in every single key. If I'm in C major here's a scale of C and to form the basic diatonic chords I add a third and a fifth above each note of the scale and then I number the chords off in Roman numerals. So I go there's C the first note add a third and a fifth that gives me the triad for chord one. Chord two, three, four, five, six, seven and then we come back to one again. So those seven basic chords are what a lot of music kind of lives and breathes on. But sometimes you sort of think, well, it's all very well using these seven chords, these seven chords, but I kind of just want to do something a bit more interesting, a bit more colourful, a bit richer. Well, one thing you can do is to extend the chords. Now you notice that we're building each of these chords in third. So if I take chord one in C major, C, E, G, you can see that C's at the bottom, E's a third above that, G's another third about it, above that. So if you extend it, you just keep building in thirds. So there's chord one, stick another third on the top of it, that's B, and that B is a seventh above the bottom note. So I've got what I call a root, the bottom note of the chord, a third, a fifth, now a seventh. Now I can carry on, I can add another third above the root, above this, this B, so another third is D. That D is a ninth above the bottom, so this is now a one nine chord. I can add another third, and it's now a one eleven chord. I can add another third, and it's now a one thirteen chord. As soon as I add another third, you notice I go back to C. So 15 takes you back to the bottom note. That's why when we extend a chord, we can extend 7th, 9th, 11th, 13th. But we don't go any further than that because it takes us back to where we started. So if you're sort of happy using the basic diatonic chords and you're thinking, oh, I'd love to get into using extended chords. Well, that's how you do it. You keep building your chords in thirds. So I could do that on any other degree of the scale. So if I take chord two, D, F, A, I do exactly the same thing. There's chord two, keep building in thirds, two, seven, two, nine, two, eleven, two, thirteen. And then of course, I'm back to D, the 15th, so I don't need to go beyond 13. So you can do this on any chord. Now the only thing is, you might have heard, the more thirds we pile into a chord, the more dissonant the chord starts to sound actually, because that basic chord one, C, E, G, all sounds very consonant. As soon as I add the seventh, well it's a nice sound isn't it? But it's introduced a little bit of dissonance because that B slightly clashes with that C. Then when I put the ninth on it, well I've got a B, a C and a D all next to each other so it's getting a bit clashy. Then I add this eleventh and then what's happening? Well I've now got C, D, E, F, G and you think oh my goodness and by the time I add the thirteenth I've got the first six notes of the scale. I've got C, D, E, F, G, A and the next one the seventh B. So it's kind of a bit of a pile up of notes isn't it? So often when we're using extended chords we don't actually use every single note of the extension. So by missing out a few notes we can clean up the sound. So okay, well that sounds good doesn't it? But it's also slightly complicating the issue because if I know I've just got to pile in all these notes, well that's easy. But when I started to miss out notes, well which notes do I miss out? So what I'm going to talk about here is four-part harmony. Now a lot of the harmony that we write 
tends to be in four parts. Doesn't matter what style you're in. You might be doubling up notes between different instruments, different voices and so on, but it's often four part harmony that we're writing. So if you want to do this in three part harmony, gets a little bit tricky with extended chords because you've got so many extra notes. It's quite difficult to bring some of these extended chords off when you're only in three parts. If you're in five parts, well, that gives you other possibilities. But if you take four as your norm, uh, I'll, I'll try and show you how best to use these. Now, sevenths, most people are kind of used to sevenths. If you're not, well, you can just explore those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Add a seventh. One, seven, two, seven, three, seven, four, seven, five, seven, six, seven, seven, seven. You get the sound of those. Because there's only one extension, it's not too bad to organize your seventh chords because you've got four notes in a seventh chord. If you're writing four part harmony, well, you might as well use all four notes. There are, you can miss out the fifth if you want to. That's usually the note that you miss if you want to use it in three parts or in four parts with maybe two parts doubling on the same pitch. Well, uh, you can do that, but miss out the fifth. If you're going to miss out something in a seventh chord, try to keep the other notes in there. When you're going beyond that, it gets a little bit more complicated. So let's just be a little bit more detailed about this. In terms of seventh chords, if you go back to the Baroque period, sort of 1600 to 1750, well, they tended to use seventh chords rather than ninths, elevenths and thirteenths. There are occasional examples of those, but they tend to use five, seven and two, seven more than other sevenths. Having said that, you'll find four, seven comes up a bit. You'll find other sevenths come up in sequences. So they do use other sevenths. But five, seven is a really strong chord because five, seven pulls you back to the tonic. And sometimes two, seven is a good chord before the five, seven going to the tonic. And that still stands today. So if you're kind of going five to one or five to six, well, you might think, can I use a five, seven? five, seven to one or five, seven to six. If you're going to do that, you might think, can I use a two, seven before that? So a two, seven, five, seven, one or two, seven, five, seven, six. You might use some inversions, two, seven in first inversion. So two, seven in first inversion, five, seven, one. Really strong progressions that have held fast through the history of kind of tonal music. Okay, so these 9th, 11th, 13th start to be added to a lot of music in the 19th century and in the 20th century took off big time in lots of different genres as well. Let's have a look at what happens if we take a 5-9 chord. And I'm working with 5 because it's the most likely chord to be extended. You can extend any other chord but five is the most likely one. So what do we do when we're using a five nine? So in the key of C, we've got G, B, D, F, A. Okay, well, one, two, three, four, five notes, only four parts. So again, the thing I mentioned a moment ago about omitting the fifth. So if you kick the fifth out, you get a G, a B, an F, and an A. So you get a root, a third, a seventh, and a ninth. And that cleans up the chord quite nicely. So I've laid that out in one particular format here with G at the bottom, the root at the bottom, the seventh the F in the tenor, the third in the alto and the ninth in the soprano. And actually by spacing those notes it cleans up the chord as well. Then you've got to think about making sure we progress smoothly. So if I go five, nine to one, do you see what I've done here? Well, we've got this going by step. We've got this going by step, this going by step. The only leap is in the bass. So nice voice leading to deal with there. And you might also notice I've particularly included these lines because when you're resolving a dominant chord that's extended, the third usually wants to rise to the tonic and the seventh normally wants to fall to the third. You can hear this wants to rise and this wants to fall. 
got A at the top there, it could go down to a G, it could go up to a C. So that doesn't have quite the same pull, but the third wants to rise by step, the seventh wants to fall by step, and that's something that particularly applies to chord five, the dominant chord. Okay, well, we could do exactly the same thing in the parallel minor key. So here I'm in C minor. Okay, so do you see what I'm doing now? I'm using exactly the same chord, but this time I'm putting an A flat at the top of it. It's nice, isn't it, in a minor key to have that A flat at the top, but it's exactly the same chord as I was using over here, but I just put an A flat at the top to make it work in C minor. So I can use that and let that resolve to the tonic chord of C minor. Another thing you can do with this is you could be in C major, but still use A flat. So you're in C major and we're quite happily in C major and then use that A flat to C major. So in other words, you're using it as a chromatic ninth in a major key. If you're in C minor, it's a diatonic ninth because it belongs to the key signature. If you're in C major, it's a chromatic note. So it's a nice cheeky little bit of color in C major. So use the A flat in C minor, but also think, oh, could I use it in C major? Okay, let's stick with the dominant chord for now. And let's think, well, what do we do if we're gonna use five 11. Okay, well, let's see what we're doing with this one. So let's take the same dominant chord, G, B, D, F, that's 5, 7. A is the ninth that we talked about a moment ago. C is the 11th. So again, I've got lots of notes, one, two, three, four, five, six notes. I've only got a four part harmony. So can you see what I've done in this particular case, in the case of the 11th, I've kicked out the fifth but I've also kicked out the third. Now we don't normally kick the thirds out of chords, but when you're writing a 511, it works quite well. So omit the fifth, omit the third, and you get a root. And then I've got a seventh in the tenor. Then I've got my ninth and my eleventh. So there's a 511 going to one. Quite nice here. There's a common note, isn't there? So if you can keep the common note in the same part, that smooths the progression from one chord to the next. That's going by step, that's going by step, there's a leap in the bass. But it works quite well. So that 511 without the third or the fifth is quite a nice clean sound. And it's just a way of doing something different on the approach to a chord one there, isn't it? Okay, you can do it in a minor key, obviously using A flat and you'd have E flat in your chord one. So you could do that to C minor. It's kind of quite juicy, isn't it? Or again, you can do exactly what I was explaining about before. You could use it as a bit of chromatic color in C major. So again, you're in C major and then you go for the A flat. C major chord. So you've just got that little bit of chromatic color. Okay, a, a little MB, a little sort of health warning to watch out for. The chromatic note is the ninth. So if you go to chord six, it's not quite so good. Often when you've got a, a five that's extended, it resolves nicely to chord one. It also resolves quite nicely to chord six. You know, you can go five, seven to one or five, seven to six. And that's true of extended chords as well. Bit tricky here. If you do this chromatic thing with the A flat and then you go chord six, it's not quite so convincing. Partly because you get false relations between A flat there and A natural in the bass. So you've got the same note different accidental, different part, different octave. That's definitely false relations. So be careful if you're gonna use this chromatic example in a major key, and then you want to follow this 511 with chord six. Much better to follow it with chord one. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, let's keep extending folks, because now, guess what? We're going on to 513. Ooh. Now then, what's 513 when it's at home? You've got G, B, D, there's your chord five. F is seven, A is nine, 
C is 11, E is 13. So that's as far as you can go. And by the way, just to kind of be sure if you ever see a 13th chord and you think, is that a 13th chord? If this note is actually a third below the bass note, so the bass is G, a third below is E. If you see that E in it, you know you're dealing with a 13th. So that's what's happening there. Okay, now what am I doing with this chord? Because again, I'm having to kind of thin it out a bit, aren't I? Because I can't afford to use all those notes. So what have I got? I've got a root uh, in the bass. I've got a seventh in the tenor. I've got a third in the alto. And I've got my 13th at the top. So you don't have to use them in that order, but you see what you need? You need a root a third, a seventh, and a thirteenth. So we see what we're missing out. We've got a root, a third, miss out the fifth, use the seventh, miss out the next things here, the, the ninth, the, the eleventh, and go for the thirteenth. And then it works very nicely as a progression to chord one. Okay, so, or it could go to chord six, you know, as I was explaining before, it goes to chord six very nicely. In many ways, the progression of parts when you're going to six is more kind of steady. We're going by step. When we go to one, we might well end up with more leaps there. But again, you know, just sort of thinking what's the best way to progress the parts. I can also do it as before in a minor key, but this time I'm going to have an E flat. So here is a dominant 13th in C minor. Or again, I can use it as a chromatic chord in C major. So dominant 13th, C major, which is rather, rather nice, isn't it? So your 13th becomes your chromatic note. So lovely, colour chords. And people are often kind of slightly frightened of using these extended chords. They think, oh my goodness, what's going to happen here? Which notes do I use? Which notes do I miss out? I hope this is kind of giving you a bit of confidence in doing that. Now, if we've talked about five being extended there. As I said, two is the next most common chord that gets extended. You can extend any other chord, but let's just have some examples working with chord two. So again, here we go with a two nine chord. So what's called two is D, F, A, and then the seventh is C, the ninth is E. So what am I gonna do in four part harmony because I've got five notes there? I'm gonna miss out the fifth so I can lose the A, yeah? So I have a, in this example here, I've got a root and the bass, I've got the seventh, the third, and I've got my ninth. Lovely chord actually, isn't it? You know, so just missing out the fifth works really well. And then that progresses very nicely to chord five. Or you might think, let's go straight to five seven. Because if you go straight to five seven, you even have a common note, F there, F there. So two nine to five, two nine to five seven rather nice. It works in the minor key slightly less well, but it's not quite so comfortable in the minor key. So interesting how 2-9 just feels a bit more comfortable there, doesn't it, um, in a major key. So something to think about. Okay, now here's another thing we can think about. You can see what I've done here. I've used the 2-9 in this example, but this time I've raised the third. Okay, so same old thing, omit the fifth when you're going into to four parts. And then just notice what I've put here by raising this third. Why am I doing that? I'm making a chromatic alteration to my two nine chord. Because as you can see what I've written there, two nine with a sharp third going to five is in effect a secondary dominant. In other words, if I was in C major and I went five or five, seven to G and then carried on in C, I'd just be making this temporary five, one into the key of G, then carrying on in C. That's what we call a secondary dominant. And we tend to think of secondary dominance as going five, seven to one in this other key. But there's nothing to say you can't go five, nine to one in the key of G. So you can think of this chord 
in two different ways. You can either think that this is a 5-9 in the key of G going to 1 in the key of G, or you can say, well, I'm in the key of C, and this is a chromatically altered 2-9, where I've raised the third to go on to a chord 5. It's the same thing. But you see how that can just kind of spruce things up a bit. That F sharp giving you a bit of color, isn't it? And again, you could do that, or you could go on to a 5, 7. And that's quite nice having the F sharp going to F natural. But if you do that, make sure it happens in the same part, because you don't want it to be giving you false relations if it's jumping in somewhere else in a different octave. So that's, that's quite nice. And this one also works particularly well in a minor key. So that's um, you know, good in minor as well. So there we are. That's kind of just showing another thing you can do with a 2-9. Use the 2-9 straight or use the 2-9 with that chromatic alteration, raising the third. But the same rules apply. Miss out the fifth and you're in business. OK, can I extend my chord 2 to an 11th? Well, you certainly can. If you're in four parts, miss out the third miss out the fifth. So what have I got here in this 211? I've got a root, I've got a seventh, I've got the ninth and the eleventh, and then I'm going on to my chord five. And again, there's a nice common note sitting there, so use that in the same part if you can. I've got two parts going by step with just one leap in the bass. So that's sort of quite a nice progression as well, isn't it? You've probably heard that progression before. Um, okay, a little MB at the bottom. 213 is less successful than a 513 when you're in four part harmony. So, you know, 29 works particularly well. Um, you, you can use the 211 as I've discussed there. You can certainly use 27. 213, probably best to give that one a miss. But I hope this kind of gives you an idea in terms of, well, what are these extended chords are about? Which are the most likely ones that I'm going to use. They're going to be five and they're going to be two. When you get confident with them, experiment with extending other chords further. If you're used to using seventh chords, that's great. Be a bit braver now. See if you can go 9, 11, 13. Think about the issues we've talked about in terms of what these chords might resolve onto and how you deal with some of the part writing, looking out for some of the traps like false relations, that kind of thing. And you'll soon just add a bit more colour and sometimes a bit more kind of warmth to your harmonic vocabulary. And these extended chords get used in so many different musical styles. So I hope that's been helpful in extending your use of the basic diatonic chords. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, let me invite you to have a little tour of our website, www.mmcourses.co.uk. Lots to see there in terms of courses and our maestros group. So do have a little route around, see what you can find that's relevant to you. Sometimes people say, you know, I can kind of write this harmony and kind of get the idea. Actually hearing it is what I find difficult. Or I've got things I can hear in my head, but I can't notate them. I can't write them down. As, I don't know what I'm dealing with. If that's part of your struggle, you might want to have a look at our oral dictation course, which sounds pretty kind of dry stuff, but actually it's a very empowering course. And it starts with just sort of straightforward rhythms, then it moves on to straightforward pitch work, and then we build into pitch and rhythm, then two parts, three parts, four parts, more using chromatic chords as we go and all the rest of it, really training the ear to hear all these chords, all this melodic movement. So that if you've got ideas in your head that you can't notate, this course will help you to do that. Um, if you're writing things, but you're not entirely sure what they sound like, this course will help you to do that. If you're wanting to improve your sight reading, particularly as a keyboard player, uh, this will really help you to look at a page and think, yep, I can hear what I'm looking at before I even play it. So it's a very empowering course. That's the oral dictation course. It's all there, www.mmcourses.co.uk.